Welcome to another analysis video and in this one we'll talk about Visa Inc. to learn more about their business model, financial performance, how much is the return on investment at the current market price and for how much I'm willing to buy it. To do that, I went over the annual reports of this company since 2017 and used key non-financial and financial information to create the report that we'll go over in a minute. And something I have to say at the beginning of every video that this video is not financial advice and for entertainment purposes only. Visa is a global payment technology company that facilitates global commerce and money movement across more than 200 countries and territories. In the annual report, there is a graph that shows the exact service Visa Inc. provides. So when you, the consumer, purchase a good or service and want to electronically pay using debit or credit card, the following process occurs. The issuer of your card, which is either your bank or the credit card company, have to transfer the purchase amount to the bank of the merchant, and this is done by using the electronic network of Visa. Visa initiate the requests, authenticate it, and then transfer the money for a fee. And this is how Visa Inc. generates the revenue, by charging a fee for every transaction. Going back to the analysis report, Visa Inc. has one stock that is traded in the stock market with the ticker symbol V. This company reports their operations in a fiscal year that ends on the 30th of September in every year. The external auditing accounting firm thinks that the financial statements are prepared fairly, so we will be using them in this analysis. Let's start by looking at the operating segments that generated 2022 revenue. Service revenues made about 34% of 2022 revenue. Data processing made 36%. International transactions made about 25% and the other revenues made about 5% of 2022 revenue. When we look at 2022 revenue geographically, 45% of 2022 revenue was generated from the transactions in the United States and 55% of the revenue was generated from the international transactions. Scrolling down to compare the revenue, operating expenses and the net income for the past few years, we find that the revenue and net income, which are the blue line and the orange line, are always increasing with the exception of 2020. The operating expenses in the gray line following the revenue growth, which is what we want to see. The amazing thing about this graph is the gross margin, which is represented by the distance between the revenue in the blue line and the operating expenses in the gray line. On average, the gross margin is 65%, which makes me believe that they have a very good business model. And I want to learn more about this company because 65% gross margin is amazing. Scrolling down, the free cash flow graph also shows us growth year over year except for 2020, which is the pandemic year. The average free cash flow to revenue ratio in the last two years is 61%. This means out of every revenue dollar, 61 cents goes to the shareholder's pocket. In my opinion, this is a mind-blowing value creation machine to the shareholders. Now let's check their solvency. The debt is 26% out of the total assets, which is very acceptable. And the company made 36 times the interest expense in 2022, which means that they can service the debt like eating a piece of cake. Scrolling down to the outstanding shares graph, Visa is buying back its shares and since 2017, they bought back about 10.5% of the outstanding shares. There is something mentioned in the annual report about the outstanding shares that I think you should know about. In my opinion, the news of this issue could impact the stock price later, but not the issue itself. So the stock that you can buy for this company in the stock market is the common stock class A. But they have 5 additional classes as you can see here. They are not traded in the stock market but are scheduled to be converted to Class A common stock in 2028, which is about in 5 years. The impact is not that material because the additional shares that will be added are about 2% out of the current outstanding shares. But you know how the stock market works, some people take advantage of bad news to short the stock and take the price down. In my opinion, it's not a serious issue, but you should know about it if you want to invest in Visa for a very long time. Going back to the analysis report, 
Visa Inc. is a dividend company. The dividend per share in 2022 was one and a half dollar, making the yield 0.6%, which I think is very ridiculous, but at least there is a dividend. Moving on to forecast 2023 revenue, free cash flow, and find out the current return investment ratio. In my opinion, 2023 revenue will be around 30.8 billion and the free cash flow about 18.8 billion. Using the outstanding shares in the 2023 Q3 report, the free cash flow per share is $10.08. And using a 4% return investment ratio, the intrinsic value matches the current stock price. So in other words, if you buy the stock today, you are buying a 4% investment. In my opinion, 4% return investment ratio is too low. But it seems that some investors know that this company is a huge value creator, so many wants to own this stock. I will continue watching this stock and wait until it goes down to around 200 to provide at least 5% return investment ratio. The next video that I will post next week is about MasterCard Corporation, which is a competitor of Visa Inc. I really hope you consider supporting this channel with two clicks. Please subscribe and like this video. Thank you and see you in another analysis video.